Hello, welcome to Cadogan Hall here in central London. I'm Zainab Badawi, your host and moderator for this Intelligence Squared debate, Sex, Bugs and Videotapes, the private lives of public figures deserve more protection from the press. You have these newspapers. The Daily Mail is a good example. They think, or well, their editor, Mr Dacre, thinks, he has the right to pillory individuals if they do something he doesn't approve of. In my case, he said that I was guilty of, quote, unimaginable depravity. But of course, it raises the interesting question of what, in Mr. Dacre's eyes, is ordinary depravity. <laughs> and apparently, it's leaving the light on while you're doing it. <laughs> really, the only people that think they can go into the bedroom of consenting adults and tell them what they should or should not do are the Taliban and Mr. Dacre. He's the, the Kensington Taliban, actually, a rather watered-down version, but the sentiment is the same. Who should decide? Well, of course, in the estimation of the newspapers, it should be them. They think it completely wrong that a judge should decide something like that. On the contrary, it should be decided by the editor. So the so-called remedy in this country is a whole lot more publicity plus a big bill. Well, I think very difficult for a rational person to claim that that's a remedy. It's like if you were, your leg were broken through negligence by somebody, and then they come along, you go to court, the court breaks the other leg and gives you a big bill into the bargain. It simply doesn't make sense. Let's not dispute that being the son of Oswald Mosley isn't easy. And uh, Max Mosley has presented a very compelling case uh, by why he was traduced. If Max Mosley had been guilty and had been involved in that mocking of Jews, then the news of the world would have been right to expose it. However, the news of the world didn't have that evidence. They invented what was just a good old fashioned British sex orgy titillated up with a Nazi theme, and they were wrong. What have the rich and fa famous got to fear about if it's the truth of their private lives? One thing, that if we know the truth and we don't like it, that perhaps we will censure them and they will then lose the right to influence our lives. The courts are going too far in this country because it is protecting the guilty, the people who are profiting from their image and profiting from deluding us about themselves. Just imagine that it wasn't Max Mosley in the basement, but it was Gordon Brown. Now let's imagine that Gordon Brown, of course, he wouldn't have had five hookers because as a Scotsman, he would have tried to make it cheaper. He would have had two. <laughs> And he would undoubtedly have said, I want two for the price of one. <laughs> you might argue, Max Mosley, that he had the right to privacy in that basement because, after all, it was a private sexual act. My argument is that he had no right to privacy because he exposed himself to blackmail. In Britain, I have no doubt that Gordon Brown would have got the protection of the courts just as President Clinton would have with Monica Lewinsky because they would have both argue that the, their privacy is sacrosanct and the public interest didn't apply. Nothing is clearer than the insidious danger posed by this creeping use of privacy by the rich and the famous and the powerful to prevent the genuine exploration of their sins, because their sins are part of influencing the way in which they govern, the way in which they run industries, they play football or whatever, the punter, the fan, the voter has the right to know, if the public interest is threatened, what that person is doing. Let's face it, taking the lawyers out of this, the real question is a commercial one. The editor thinks, with this intrusion into someone's private life, am I going to sell more copies? Will people buy more papers? Am I really likely to be sued? If I am, what will it cost me? Sex, bugs, and videotapes. What threats do we face from them? 80% of the intrusions into privacy are about sex. The press will tell you it's in the public interest. We will have the right to know. Is it really in the public interest 
Does it contribute to the debate within society? Or is it just interesting to the public? Tom Bowers just mentioned John Terry allegations. They broke on the same day as the Chilcot inquiry when Tony Blair gave evidence and we'd all waited years to hear from him. That received hardly any coverage that Friday and that weekend. Who does privacy law belong to? People to go to law to protect their privacy tend to be people of influence in many spheres. People without money and power don't get to put a price on their secrets. They can't afford it. I think this is a world where we'll see less investigation and more self-censorship in relation to powerful and influential people. There is a risk that in some cases at least, what we're talking about really, rather than protection of privacy, is image control. The title of this debate is about the private lives of public figures. Your speech dealt entirely with the private lives of public figures in bed. That is a subsection of the subject. And let me give you a counterexample. The Watergate tapes, never intended to be made public, disclosed that the President of the United States was a foul-mouthed anti-Semite. It is not totally unknown, even in British politics, for maladjusted personalities in high political office to hold bizarre conspiracy theories about Jews, as of course you know. I'm suggesting that that is a perfectly reasonable private issue for the press to disclose. How could it possibly not be? I yeah. think where the British courts went so wrong was on Tiger Woods. He was a man who earned a fortune from publishing and promoting himself as a family man. When he was exposed that he was a serial bonker and adulterer, he, was, he immediately came to England where the British judges gave him an injunction to prevent the British press publicizing what the whole world already knew. Many surveys of sexual health, sexual behavior, and sexual attitudes show that things that are exposed in the press by people who are famous are completely the norm. So why does the public need to have the right to know about this? If somebody's behavior, sexual behavior, is criminal, e.g. paedophilia, then the public has, there is the correct recourse to deal with that. Tom Bauer, I mean, you've written these exposés about these public figures on the basis that the public have a right to know. If the tables were turned and we started learning about your private life, your sex life, how would you feel about that? It's very boring and you'd be bored. <laughs> they, they always say that. They always say that. <laughs> but, but would... <laughs> Why? <laughs> my, wife is, my wife is disagreeing. <laughs> um, the Trafigura case showed exactly how appalling this uh, use of injunctions and how supine the courts are, the judges are. Trafigura is an oil trading company which dumped toxic materials uh, you know, off the Ivory Coast, uh, injuring tens of thousands of people. And the exposure of that... Um, crime, in inverted commas, or that malfeasance or tort, was suppressed at the behest of a judge because Trafigura was not only able to get an injunction preventing the discussion of his culpability, but he even sought an injunction in, against MPs raising it. Now, this is how far the contamination of our democracy has gone by those purvey who they're promoting the libel and now blurring it into privacy laws. You're not talking here about the misuse of the power of the press, because I assure you that most journalists and most editors are very responsible. It is, in Max's case, a very unfortunate case that it somehow, there was a rogue uh, example. But on the whole, privacy cases do not arise because the press is responsible. It's responsible because they're aware of enormous power.